Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I thought today I would just uh, have a look at the uh, the microphone amplifier and uh, a couple of other things uh, where I've got to with the uh, the transceiver. Anyway, so for today, like I say, let's just have a quick look at the um, the audio seek frequency uh, amplifier, which is for the uh, the microphone. And uh, what I elected to do was to use the same. Uh, configuration in terms of a, a BJT amplifier as I did for the first stage of the audio frequency uh, amplifier. So you'll see here a, a 2N3904, it's in a, a common emitter configuration uh, with voltage divider biasing and we'll look at the calculations in a sec but essentially exactly the same setup. What I wanted for this particular amplifier here is I wanted to have a flat response between 300 hertz and 3 kilohertz so across the uh, what will be the pass band in the crystal uh, filter. So again, just to sort of um, maximise uh, the, the the voice portion of uh, the audio spectrum. I'm going to uh, again have a quiescent current through the device of 10 milliamps, uh, and as we've seen before, that gives us a beta DC uh, of, of in terms of a geometric mean uh, off the data sheet of 173. And again, I'm going to, like I said in the previous video, for this particular transceiver, is I'm going to set the emitter resistance, say again, the emitter voltage, to be uh, DC uh, 1 volt. So I won't go through the full calculations, but um, exactly the same as last time. So RE, again, 1 volt with 10 milliamps, gives us 100 ohms. R2 here, same configuration, comes out at 3 kilo ohms. Uh, R1 here. Um, 11 times the, the base current going through that for, for um, a nice stiff uh, voltage divider biasing again comes out at 20 kilohertz. Uh, RC as we saw wanted to uh, set the voltage at the collector to be roughly halfway between VCC uh, and the emitter voltage. Uh, in this particular case for this, this amplifier here I'm going to throw a 100 ohm in, uh, resistor in the VCC line just to give a bit of isolation for the audio so I can try and minimize uh, any kind of variations in there coming from the power supply. Uh, what else can we see here? Right, so the coupling capacitors here. Uh, what I've done in the past is I've tried to have the uh, capacitive reactance for the coupling capacitors on the input and the output to be less than uh, 100 ohms uh, at the lowest frequency of operation. Uh, the lowest because we know that the inductive reactance, uh, say again, the capacitive reactance is inversely proportional to frequency. So as frequency goes up, this goes down. So therefore the worst case scenario is when F is at its lowest level, this will be at its highest. Uh, and I said before that I wanted from a design point of view this to be 300 hertz. So I've used that as a design. Um, that means that we want the capac that capacitor on the input and the out to be output to be no less than around 10 microfarads. Um, and I've used L um, LT Spice, which we'll look at again in just in a sec, um, to look at and compare uh, 10 microfarads and 47 microfarads, which is another one I've used before. Uh, in terms of our emitter um, bypass capacitor, bypassing the um, the res resistive or the resistor RE uh, again I've in the past I've set that to be uh, no greater than a tenth of RE at the lowest frequency in this particular case because my my criteria was to be nice and flat uh, is I've compared a um, hundred uh, microfarads and 470 microfarads on LT spice which we'll have a look at. Anyway, so um, like I said, I wasn't going to go into the full details of all that, but um, I will put this up on the, the blog. So just shifting through to LT Spice, um, I'm not quite sure how well this is going to come through. Um, I'm not going to invest in any uh, video capturing software for the computer, but I think that should be good enough there. So we can see this is the circuit set up here, and for the emitter bypass capacitor here, I have used this little coolie bracket C which allows me then to have a, um, a command which uh, tries two different values. So in other words up here you can see 
100 microfarads and 470 microfarads. And down here on the simulation, we can see two plots. We can see a green plot here and a blue plot. And the left hand end is 300 hertz, and the right hand end is uh, 5 kilohertz. So just beyond um, our 3 kilohertz, which is approximately about here. So we can see uh, the 100 microfarad capacitor as the bypass. We seem to get quite a bit of drop off. And certainly if we drop down to here at 300 hertz, we have a good 15.6 you know, dB uh, versus 21 dB for the 470 microfarad capacitor. Uh, the blue line here, I'm, I think I can just see it on the camera there, uh, is the 470 microfarad capacitor. Uh, and as you can see there, its frequency response is, is very flat all the way down to, you know, sort of down to 350, maybe 400 hertz where it's just starting to drop off, but, but nowhere near to the extent uh, of the 100 microfarad capacitor. So that's what I wanted to try, and um, as you can see there, the 470 is significantly better, uh, which is why you see 470 microfarads uh, in the actual final schematic. Anyway, so um, I find LT Spies really useful just to, to simulate the circuits, um, certainly using this command here to compare two different uh, values or any value of bit resistance or capacitance or whatever on the fly during simulation is great and you can compare the graphs. Anyway, so that's what we have there. Um, let me just move the camera back to back to where the O-scope is. So the way I've got it set up here um, I've got the SIGGEN uh, outputting a voltage, it's 10 millivolts. Um, I chose 10 millivolts because as you would have seen just at the start of the video there when I was talking through the microphone here, uh, that's my normal voice is the equivalent to uh, 10 millivolts coming in. So I'm using that as the uh, excitation voltage and I'm sweeping between 300 hertz and 3 kilohertz over a space of 2 seconds. Uh, and as we can see on the oscilloscope, if I was to zoom up, um, as expected, the overall um, variation is, 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 is not varying over that range. In other words, in line with the bow plot we saw on, on SPICE, uh, it's, it's got a good constant gain across that frequency range. So that's pretty good and I'm happy with that. What else is worth saying there? So just coming down to the actual circuit itself. Again, sorry for moving the camera around, but I'm not a professional and this is just a video log as I've said many times. Oh, I think that's going to come into focus, I hope so. What I have elected to do, um, the input is on this side here, so the orange one here is the microphone input. Uh, the two 47 microfarad capacitors and then the large 470 microfarad uh, bypass capacitor for RE there. Uh, on the output I have a 10k uh, trim pot and then on the wiper arm to earth is a, uh, a 50 ohm resistor or 51 ohm in this particular case uh, and that is uh, simulating what will be the um, SBL1 which is a 50 ohm um, mixing device. So that's what we're looking at there with the oscilloscope. Uh, that's probably about all I think I need to say about that. Um, like I say, happy with that. It seems to be going well. And I'll now set that aside. And once we get all the other components built up, we can, um, we can start to put things together. The only other thing which has been finished off, uh, probably not going to come out very well on the camera at this particular angle, uh, all the software has been done, so uh, again, can we see that? We zoom up. I think you can just see it. The angle is pretty poor um, at this angle here. Um, so our SSB CW is being recognised. Our CW spot. These are just um, tests at the moment. Uh, once I have the rest of the circuitry in place, uh, there will be various outputs which will drive certain things. So the spot works. The antenna tune works. Um, AD40 works, um, we've got the two VFOs, we've got VFO A and a VFO B, and signified by where the star is at. So in this particular case, the bottom one, which is VFO B, is what's being varied. Um, and that's VFO B for the other band. So that's all up and running and going. 
So I don't need to do anything more on that, like I say, until we have the rest of uh, the secretary in place, uh, and then I can start to add code to um, to do the, uh, the CW spot and the antenna tune. So that's just waiting for me there. Other than that, uh, apologies for that uh, little uh, on the on the sound there. Uh, that is probably about all. So the only other development is. Um, it was very interesting listening to Farhan's lecture on his radio that he's just built, uh, his analog radio. And what I found particularly interesting was some comments he made about the crystal filter and his selection of 5 MHz to be the IF. Uh, and the reason predominantly was around uh, the ability to uh, easily make a homebrew crystal filter for CW and have that that 500 odd Hertz pass bend so I thought that was quite interesting so what I've elected to do in the halfway here is to order a hundred five megahertz crystals so um, they're coming from from China at the uh, great expense of 10 New Zealand dollars so you may get what you pay for but that's fine uh, so when they turn up, I'll, um, I'll look to, to make up a 5 megahertz IF based SSB and then a, a second CW uh, crystal filter at that frequency. So, yeah, that's that. Um, what else? I have um, made up the IF amplifier, so that's all been designed up uh, and simulated. Um, I won't do a video on that until I've uh, actually got the crystal filters and um, looked at what the impedance needs to be before I, um, I finish simulating that. But that's all been done, which is good. Right, what else was there? Um, no, I think crystal filter with the uh, IF amps. So, um, yeah, I think that's about all. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll say 73 here, and I will put some more thought into uh, the bandpass filter uh, for... Uh, for the radio uh, and the low pass filters. Um, I'm just debating on the band pass filters if I'm going to use what I've done in the past, which has certainly worked well for me, uh, which is the uh, the SSDRA, the solid state design for the radio amateur um, uh, uh, filters out of the back of that, or should I go for a, um, a three inductor or a third order uh, filter? I haven't quite decided. Um, I've had no, absolutely no problems with the the ones out of SSDRA, so I think I might just continue uh, to use those. But anyway, so we'll do some more simulations and um, and finalise that. Anyway, I've uh, I've rambled on way longer than I wanted to, so apologies for that. Um, 73, and we will catch you up next time. Cheers all.